So picking up on what was a really powerful chat with a lot of amazing things said um, by you two, what, one of the things that really um, strikes me is this, this thing about talking about stuff. Um, and Alex, for you, as a rugby playing guy, who I suspect, a bit like my husband, you know, doesn't always want to articulate feelings, doesn't always want to talk about things when they're not going according to plan. And I, I really have to drag it out of him kicking and screaming. You know, w when you started to realise things were unravelling, you know, what was the moment that made you think, I'm going to have to share this with Mel, we're going to have to talk it through. If we're going to get through this, we're going to have to be honest with each other about what's going on here. Play well, it, it was it was the bike ride that that the that for me being being lost, being scared, um, coming home, and basically breaking down to Mal that something was up, and we'd known for six nine months that leading up to that day there was something wrong, but I was sticking my head in the sand and just ploughing on that as a rugby player that was the only way. You knew how to move forward and not complain, not show weakness and carry on. And finally admitting that, because it was put upon me getting lost in that situation on that bike ride, coming back, it felt like a massive weight off my shoulders, us talking and booking the appointment the following day to go and see my GP. Um, and, yeah, it was... It needed to be done six months before that, but for for us now, we we talk about everything, don't we? And I think that's yeah. the, the 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 biggest thing I take from this. I wish I did it sooner. And Mel, how but about you? Because you would have, yeah. yeah. How would how how did he's, you approach that? Because were you going through a whole period of um, frustration leading up to that moment, thinking we've got to confront whatever's going on here. I mean, how, how were you feeling leading up to it that? Because Al says there was six months that. prior. I'd say it was more like it was more like a year. Well, it was that year. Yeah. It was end of 2018. I was noticing these issues and pointing them out. And he wasn't... And he always had been somebody willing to talk. We started our relationship as, as, as good friends and best mates who did talk about everything. So yeah. your reluctance to talk, it was a double-edged sword, actually, because then I, his denial, I was then thinking, well, I can't say something to my friends or my family that I'm worried about him because I was breaking his trust. I didn't want anyone to judge him because some of the things involved him having these incredible Hulk, as I named them, situations where he ripped a banister off in our house, he smashed up door frames. I've locked Darcy and I away in the utility room to avoid her seeing any of this. He was never violent at us, but he was very violent at the house in these rages that he'd then, they'd last maybe 15 minutes, 20 minutes, then he'd break down in tears and sob and be in the dark room in, in bed and couldn't speak. Yeah. I wasn't telling anyone about any of that. And... What happened to me the summer of 2019, just before Al went to the doctor, so that's why I made it my final straw was the bike ride for him. I said, that's it. No more arguing, you're going. Yeah. And you agreed, finally. Um, but a couple of months earlier, I'd been diagnosed with a stomach ulcer and alopecia. And, but the doctor largely decided it was down to stress and particularly emotional stress because I was holding everything in, trying to spin these plates, being a new mum, being a, you know, running a company, holding things together for Al, keeping it all in, in our um, world and our closed doors. And I was falling apart physically, yeah. actually. Um, I'm just putting on a brave face. And I say I was using work as a bit of a sanctuary because we live in South Wales and I was still working in London. So I'd, you know, put the makeup on, you know, blow dry the hair, work outfit on and I'm OK and could be you know, the armour's on for the day. And then I'd often find myself sitting on a train back from London for two hours, just sobbing on my own in the carriage with, you know, listening to my headphones and get back here. And, and it was sort of back into putting on a brave face for Al. So what I've learned from this, that wasn't the right way to deal with it at all. And I've learned since, and uh, my mum's insistence actually went for some therapy and, and worked through some stuff. And I'm a huge advocate that, we do need to talk, and a problem shared is a problem halved. And and, and on that, when we are now talking, when I'm talking to ex-players, you're talking to the wives, we, with what we learnt 
we we weren't right all the time but what we did is we've got a good system in place now with uh going to when you go to your gps ask to see a neuropsychologist ask to see an occupational therapist all those things trial and error with on our behalf a part we've got those now to the recommend strategies, yes i think that we worked really hard to put into place straight away even before our treatment but that's we've been able to share with others yes. but i think for me with the other partners it's about somebody and it was frankie lipman and i actually who our first ever phone call you know, three and a half years ago was wow it's talking to somebody else walking mm. in my shoes and particularly being a partner in this situation like at times i say is that the brain injury or are you just being a dick <laughs> excuse my language but you know we've got a big humor to it because yeah. there are times in a relationship where there are arguments or somebody's just being annoying so it i disagree very, yeah. <laughs> but it became very imbalanced because it was always about making sure i was okay and it was like hang on a minute we've yeah. got to find some balance back yeah. here so the group of of a lot of and the, uh, there's a lot of players who are diagnosed who haven't gone public with their diagnosis whose whose partners I speak to regularly and and being able to share those frustrations with each other over a, a phone call or a zoom with a, a you know a coffee or sometimes it's a glass of wine and just being able to feel angry and being able to express that and being able to express fear or um frustration or annoyance because being turned on to positive all the time and being strong all the time actually isn't healthy or tenable and I've learned that I think yeah. that's my biggest personal learn from this and I know it can and be quite a cathartic. bit of vulnerability yeah it's that's so true the vulnerability bit is very true and it, it can yeah. be cathartic talking about it but also I suppose if I was in your positions I'd really hope that talking about it would make a difference too and I guess that's that's where you're coming from as well I mean Alex do you hope what is your hope for people you know who perhaps are experiencing something similar to actually you know take steps in order to move forward in the right way based on hearing you guys speak because they might recognize themselves in this no definitely and and and, and admitting to yourself that something isn't right getting in contact with with me head for change making that step is huge um and 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 find find out if if there is something going wrong with with getting tested but all of this is is uh, to, to, has, has helped us is helping a lot of other people and as Mel said earlier we still love rugby and we, we've had a couple of people saying we're trying to ruin rugby I look in the mirror and I know every day that I'm doing this for the right reason to to help people to make sure rugby survives because without telling the truth of what's happening it's not going to survive uh, and we need to do that um, and help as many as we can are you stronger as a couple, do you think, because of this? Yeah. yeah, without a doubt. We were, we were, as I say, even in our wedding vows, I'm, I've always been the coach, he's been the captain, and that's how our <laughs> dynamic has always worked really well, and we're a great team, and we just have a laugh together, but going on this journey together, and the, you know, from the darkest, lowest lows to the highest highs, and just navigating our way through it all it's it's been challenging it's been tough Georgie but without a doubt it's definitely made us stronger Stronger. yeah yeah I feel like we could take on the world I feel like there's nothing that couldn't just looking forward to a few holidays now (laughs) I'd like some downtime (laughs) a little bit we've had we've had a busy summer and autumn with events and things like that we're already planning next year's and I'm looking to do 15 for change so 15 different challenges around the world to raise money for this clinical trial, but we won a couple of uh, winter, ra- winter sum. We had a rather busy... He gave me three in a row, the Ironman, cycling to Leon and then swimming the channel, and we had that in the space of a month, Yeah, um, which was full on. So yeah. whilst for a little bit of a pause, the next event isn't till Feb, is it? No. The first one of the year will be February, and then they'll start building again. So well, if you, a bit of downtime you, first. Yeah. If you need a boat... Or anybody that can sail one, I know a person that can and that can help you with that. Yeah, <laughs> that would be a, that would be a great challenge. That would be a great challenge. I'd love to learn that. We said, didn't we? That, we do you know what? That was on our always on our bucket list of our 
bucket but, list before our um, diagnosis was we want both want to learn to sail. My dad was in the navy and born with salt water in his veins. I've always been a swimmer. I was now learned to swim, and um, got really into open water swimming. And we'd always said we were going to learn to sail, didn't we? And then I yeah. thought, oh, he's not going to be able to do that now because learning something new was a problem for him now. But we need to bring back the list of all the new things, things yeah. we're going to get you to do. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, you've got to write a new list. Start brilliant. with that at the top of it because I can help you with it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, oh, please. Thanks so much, <laughs> Where guys. Where are we going? Where are we going? <laughs> yeah, let's book it. Let's do it now. Oh, I love, I, I love it. Thank you yeah. so much. It's been really fascinating, really uplifting, really interesting, heartbreaking, of course, but there's a positive end game, I hope. And it's been yeah, fascinating definitely. to hear what you've had to say. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Judy. And hold me, hold me to that sailing thing because I will make it happen. I will. Oh, do you know what? I will. 